Never let anyone try to bring you down Set up your powerful defenses Brush it off and send it out of town Just trust your divine senses You are far more bigger than you think you are You are the mighty human being With all your gifts and talents You are a superstar With love in your heart your eternal future far seeing You are loved, you are powerfully protected In the name of beloved source of all You are safely guided and reconnected After hearing the divine call An awesome future is ahead For everyone to see You rose like a phoenix out of the ashes The times are gone, you are playing it small After eons of heavy and brutal clashes You finally heard your divine call You are loved, you are powerfully Protected in the name of beloved source of all You are safely guided and reconnected After hearing the divine call You are loved, you are powerfully protected In the name of beloved source of all So let's see. Okay. Hey, hello, everyone. Thanks for coming on the podcast. We have a magical, mystical show today. And I have a great guest on today, Dr. Amir Jahan Giri, uh, the Wizard of Wavenhome. Uh, and, uh, yeah, can you tell the audience a little about yourself and how you got into this life in the, of the magical world? <laughs> well, my, my dear friend, Sean, thank you so much for the opportunity. I would like to extend my warmest greetings to our audience, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're doing really well. Thank you for your valuable time. Um, I'm Amir Jahangiri. Um, I was born in Iran. Um, lived there for many years, the first third of my life, moved to the United Kingdom. Um, I've pursued two things mainly. Uh, one is uh, academia and the second is spirituality. So in the first half, um, I got my doctorate in uh, computer science, focusing on um, machine learning and brain computer interfaces, artificial intelligence. And on the spiritual side, um, I think I was born with many of these uh, gifts and wonders uh, awake. I, I learned how to meditate and leave my body at the age of five. This continued. I had some dormant years, uh, my teenage years. But then at around, at around 18, all of it came back with a vengeance, never stopped. I scared myself a little at the beginning. Uh, but the curiosity took over. I continued to learn and investigate and uh, went through many different modalities, anything I could get my hands on. I, I dove in with full dedication. And every time I complete a system, uh, it seems a new one approaches, as if by magic. Um, right now, I focus mainly on healing work. Uh, there is no shortage of valuable and correct information out there. Um, the world is in need of uh, competent and uh, capable healers with integrity. 
And so that's how Sean and I came into communication, um, doing some mutual projects and um, focusing on healing and also remote viewing. And so we kind of hit it off really warmly. And so I would like to call Sean my dear friend. Hopefully this friendship and cooperation will continue and bear great fruits. Oh, yes. I agree. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, we did a little exchange session uh, between our sessions and it was lovely. I, I definitely felt quite a bit, felt you in the removing of certain uh, attachments and devices, especially around the head and uh, the neck and throat. So thank you. That was very uh, lovely and uh, yeah, safe and uh, like your tool tech and the methods that you uh, view into these things and uh, translate a higher dimensional message. Well, I'd like to express my Franco. gratitude also for that uh, exchange session. Um, well, many of you probably already know, but... Um, Sean is really capable and incredibly fast. Uh, watching him work is like looking at somebody take a fighter jet apart down to the last screw in five minutes flat and then put the whole thing back together again in three and a half minutes and say, oh, but by the way, this and this and this and this needed fixing. That's done. Um, so, yes, I'm very grateful for your wisdom and your uh, multi-universal uh, toolkit. Uh, Sean is a, a very expansive being, and so he brings yeah. many techniques from beyond this local universe. I would strongly recommend, if you haven't already worked with him, to please um, invest. It will be something absolutely worth your while. Same, same. I uh, suggest work on Tamir as well. Uh, and I'm uh, going to bring you to some nice breakthroughs and messages that will strengthen your path. So thank you very much for what you've offered. And yeah, we'll probably exchange in the future. Um, okay, so uh, what is magic to you? And we'll, we'll build off of this. Okay, excellent. And everyone defines well, it differently. <laughs> so magic is creating change in the outside world in accordance to one's will. So writing a poem, creating a theater play, making a sculpture, baking a cake, uh, delivering a speech. If it causes change in accordance to your will, this is all magic. Now let's focus on this truth, this fact that the human being is more than just the physical. There is irrefutable evidence towards this. The more you dive in, the stronger and more coherent the evidence becomes. And so creating this change in accordance to one's will is not limited to the physical dimension. We have access to much more. And so therefore, the pursuit of magic is the pursuit of self, the truth of who and what we are. And then our mission in life becomes removing of all obstacles in our path, anything that makes us small, anything that keeps us away from our truth. Now, what is that truth, you may ask? Well, we are shards of that brilliant source of all sources. And this is quoting Rumi. We are a drop from the mighty ocean, but we are the mighty ocean in one drop. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Definitely a lot of layers to it. Um, greater understanding of the nature of existence and uh, its laws and uh, physics uh, is indistinguishable from magic as advanced knowingness, science, and technology. All the same, uh, mystic arts, uh, unseen subtle energy mastery, enlightenment, spirituality, miracles, all different concepts of energy influence and uh, bring it to where you're aligned with the universe or bring, uh, under its will or aligned with the will, the greater will. And there's other factions, you know, like dark magic, but I'm really invested in that one. Uh, so, and, and I don't recommend it. And layers, like 
some people will go into like your ability to influence the physical reality through the astral. There's many other layers that can do that too, such as uh, dream seers and scapers and uh, journeyers and vision questers and people that can be multiple places at once, multidimensional body tech unlocks so many uh, ways to influence reality. Um, manifesting reality, warping, summoning, uh, enhancing the body, uh, working different type of elementals, uh, working with spirit entourage of different types. And then it goes into many different subjects like light magic, dark magic, spatial, like you know, even going to advanced things like teleportation. Uh, telekinesis, which goes to force or uh, influence control, chi, mastery, chi gong, um, and the nigongs, and the many different uh, practices that go with that that amplify the physical body and its ability to perform in martial arts. Journeying within yin yang, uh, explosive, implosive energy, the spirit world. Yeah, there's so there's there, I can't even <laughs> so many layers. Um uh, and, and then consciousness expansion. Uh your the person's will um and going beyond the physical body, uh, making the world a better place or a worse place, whatever you know they choose, but I'd recommend it a better place. Um bringing your heaven to earth. Um, so, yeah. And when did you start noticing gifts and uh, things calling to you in this world uh, so that people may kind of like see that pathway within themselves as uh, it calls you towards it? Oh, well, uh, I think most of this stuff is most powerful in childhood. And when we have the least amount of conditioning and brainwashing. Um, so by the time we are born, there's already much done to our physical and energetic structure to make sure that we are anchored in this holographic reality so that we remain good prisoners in the system and this whole cycle of reincarnation. Again, there are great purposes to this, but the facts are the facts. But it seems the most damaging is done by us to ourselves, meaning our parents, our society, educational system, culture, religion, economics, and so on. So the magic is beaten out of us pretty early on, conclusively when we enter school. Uh, so for me, this was my most concrete memory, is getting um, um, visited by um, elementals at around the age of four. Every, every morning I'd wake up and I had a large windowsill in my room and there was this little fey being, air elemental, sitting on the window. I could just make out the outlines of the body uh, with a gentle feminine laugh. And every time I'd see this being, I'd say, hey, I don't know what's going on, but I'm happy with it. And then she'd start giggling. We'd have lots of conversations. And this went on for quite a while about six or seven months until I told my mom and she said, no, that's not real. And being a little good four and a half year old, I said, okay, it's probably not real. I didn't get visited again till last month when a very powerful um, healer opened the path back up. And I got this joyful visit once again from the same being. In terms of... Um, being in tune with nature, many of us feel this. That is a place of great magic and healing. Uh, that never ceases to be true. Uh, but then as we go through life and we are burdened with these distortions and overlays and untruths, then it becomes really important for us to find some sort of a methodology to remove these and begin to strengthen ourselves the way that it's intended to be. So meditation in one form or the other seems to be really, really beneficial. So no matter what type uh, of spiritual or magical working uh, one chooses to pursue for that period in their life, um, meditation seems to be very important. So many may think, okay, what is meditation? 
Is it just sitting in the lotus pose, being still and thinking of nothing? Well, no, not really. Um, meditation is the art of achieving unified consciousness harmonics. Uh, harmonics as in there are different vibrations, perhaps multiples of each other, or maybe separated by octaves of resonance. We have a presence in all dimensions. That is one of the unique properties of humankind. We have a physical layer, and then we have presence in all dimensions, primordial light, sound, void, and aspects in the beloved source of all things. And so as a result, we have a unique consciousness in each of these domains. The main problem is uh, people rely too heavily on the conscious mind. And so when that stream of harmonics or consciousness wants to um, become har harmonious, the conscious mind or the monkey brain goes crazy. No, 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 I'm probably imagining it. No, 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 that can't be true. No, 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 no. And so meditation initially is um, teaching the monkey brain to find peace. Because at the end of the day, it has just one simple yet very profound purpose. The purpose of the organ, that is the brain, is to keep us alive in physical reality. That's it. Now, when we want to access our infinite genius or infinite consciousness, it must learn to step aside and allow those gentle whispers of the soul to make it through in harmony. So that is the definition of meditation, it is the definition of healing. It is the definition of magic. Because once that harmony of all aspects of our consciousness is achieved, all the rest is just a natural byproduct. Um, <laughs> yeah, like the cities as we go in, uh, which are the superpower symptoms that come with uh, elevated states of consciousness. The pathway needs to be held in uh, great regard uh, as the main purpose. Otherwise, um, growth stifles and like going to the core and finding uh, optimization of uh, what's the core thing that you need to resolve that uh, uh, releases a lot of the blocks that are held, allowing the matrix and the other external negative systems of limitation to attach. And that's the well, the the pathway of ascension and enlightenment in Buddhism, Hinduism, and letting go of those things that we must, uh, that we're holding on to, that we don't know we're holding on to. Uh, like in the ego is the big well-known aspect uh, that's been labeled. How that centers in the solar plexus where uh, branches off the soul, which branches of the mind, branches off the ego. And it's very, I mean, it's, it, it wants to help us survive, and that's because there's so many things that we took on in wounds. Um, the species passed down the genetics as well as the soul. Wounds, like from Fall of Atlantis and big catastrophes and realities breaking down to where it held the reality together and is compartmentalizing everything until you are ready to take care of each compartment and figure out what it is holding on to until it lets go and then disperses and comes to peace. What people experience is the ego death when a big compartment that the ego is holding on to releases and purifies. It feels like you're one with everything and so much love and lightness comes in. Uh, it, it doesn't go fully away, it purifies and merges with the higher self, allowing the higher self to come into the body which uh, is what people are after when they wanted to integrate their higher self, which helps because it's like big cloud aspects of yourself and consciousness in the source field. Certain places of it are like in held security as generators to make it bigger, but um, you're wanting to get more of it into this body so it can activate more and more of the technology automatically that the ego is trying to maintain in a limited finite way to protect you so that the higher self automatically protects you and then also allows for greater safety for the greater abilities to unfold which is a, a great form of magic because you just like hey higher self and source 
connection. Can you get on that thing I wanted to happen in programming internally or externally? And then it, it starts doing things and then you put a bunch of energy towards it uh, becoming and then you monitor it and then until it's complete or if it's, you know, hard or it takes more awareness then it, it will bring that awareness to you. Yeah, the ego is a big thing. Um, it's like the layers of the false self and the illusionary self, which uh, keeps you from getting to the true self deep within the heart, which is ultimately self is an illusion and that you are everything and that. Uh, but the, that's a state of being maintained and actual actualization to get to that comes with many big things that many masters, Buddhist masters, uh, Pot, Mason, Baba, there's, uh, you know, the older Dalai Lamas, Tenzin, and uh, other people that have achieved rainbow body and Buddha body and dragon body and uh, advanced forms of light body and unbilocating unbi on them uh um, unmanifesting their form and then bring it somewhere else dispersing shrinking their body uh being able to melt through rock uh fly all kinds of sages masters magi uh priests um old different types of religion that don't really exist anymore uh it, avatars advanced source beings incarnate got uh you know deities whether they were de deified before or after interacting with people um yeah there there is a lot to unfold and they're and learning the rules of this reality is interesting because it's different than a lot of other ones so people that may have mastered the ascending pathway other places or here in the past the rules changed so it's like oh learning it again and an even harder difficulty it's yes. kind of you know take fun with that because uh, then, because absolutely. other places are easier and that makes it easier to do things there when you master it here. I completely agree with all that you have said. Very beautifully put. Um, our holographic reality, or the experiment that I like to call guaranteed unnatural evolution, which is what we're going through on Earth, mm -hmm. unnatural levels of difficulty. The purpose ultimately being the creation and evolution of the super being, which is us, the mighty human. And many may look at these vessels and say, well, this doesn't seem too super. Well, that is true in part. Um, these bodies are not put together with the entire code. They're just put together in a very uh, rushed and expedited way just to test a few remaining genetic and energetic characteristics. Ultimately, the result of this whole multi-hundred million process of life on Earth is us. And now if we put all the codes together, including the energetic structure of the human being, it is truly monumental. Down here, it seems that the, although the laws are changing constantly, um, by the way, kudos to those who are governing and running this hologram. That is a masterpiece of technology. We have to give credit where credit is due. In its complexity and the beauty of the structure, it seems down here our mission really is not to accumulate nothing, not energy, not power, not wealth, nothing. It seems to be entirely a game of increasing your flow. It doesn't matter where you are, what the conditions are, how much divine light can you pull in? That is when nature is your ally. That is when you are the forces of nature. In all dimensions, that is when you are truly powerful. And yet when the conditions are peaceful, you release and you can lie underneath a tree and think of absolutely nothing. It's all about that capacity. How much resistance do you have? Or have you turned into a superconductor? And so the path of growth, which will also lead to the unveiling and activation of all our gifts, seems to be related to this resistance-free flow of light. Whether we want to define this as light of the beloved source, or 
um, gifts or codes or technology from our infinite soul. Um, it seems to all align down to this. So, therefore, the path of evolution, in my humble opinion, is breaking free of all sources of resistance. One of the main ones that you beautifully talked about is the ego. That is perhaps one of the worst. It is um, like, um, you know, in different stages of life. Let's think about the human being. Um, when we are conceived, the first cell is created and then we start multiplying. In the fetal stage, the protective boundaries of the womb are absolutely vital. Or maybe in a different species, the protective boundary of the eggshell is vital. Uh, but then you reach a point where this boundary or ego is becoming harmful and then a little further down the line it becomes deadly. So as we continue to grow, we reach a stage where this boundary has to be broken. So the death of ego, in fact, is the removal of all these boundaries. It doesn't mean that we can't embody our roles as, let's say, um, an individual human being. We may be a father, we may be a son, we may be a grandpa, we may be so many things in our families, we may have a role in our job, in society, and so on. We can still choose to play these roles, but we are no longer limited and bound by them. So removing the boundaries of identity leads to ego death. And this is where you truly understand, without any shed of a doubt, that you see that you are everything. Uh, that there really is no inside or outside. And so with that conditioning of the consciousness within which the conscious mind is also included, but there are more aspects to consciousness. Once that seeps within you and you truly accept it, that is when the resistance to that light uh, or the source of all things reduces. That is when magic becomes powerful. You're not carrying a storehouse of power, so to speak. You're just able to pull through the entire universe if need be. Yeah, yeah, and there's different paths for those that have discovered that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, and a lot of it is learning how to break through the illusions and what we previously believe uh, is true that is ultimately holding on to a limit in reality and ourselves. And that's like the big path going deep within. Uh, but yeah, and like different cultures religions belief will talk about light in different ways and the um the the brighter amount of it and what that takes such as uh accumulating density which is part of ascension uh which it kind of is a bit of a misnomer because it's, you're technically getting to a state of being that already exists and is already there underneath it all and you're getting rid of the the veils and the illusions and the, the attachment and the filters and the things that allow to be the presence as if it's already there shining greatly and undimmed because like the dimmer mechanisms that are let it let go but there are also people that you know as you accumulate chi they'll go into like a build of density like hurling it that kind of works too but there are um, other ways to accumulate energy in which it wants to be a part of you. It's already a part of you. It's there's energy that's already yours and it's just being weighted to be received. But there's so many parts of us that are closed off from receiving yeah. from the rest of the universe. Yeah. Um, so we got some questions in the chat. Uh, so I'll, I'll bring them up for you and then uh, yeah, I go ahead and answer them uh, and then I'll answer them. Okay, so let's see here. From uh, James Whittus, uh, Whittacus, what's happening when I'm in the half awake, half asleep state just before dozing off? I find myself being aware in multiple consciousnesses. Well, Anything you want to uh, say about that? Yes, sure. So mm, you are becoming free of the bounds of the body. As the brain um, changes its frequency, 
you're going into sleep state, the body is relaxed, and so you can now release the consciousness into the lower and higher astral. Your awareness of these domains is reflection of your ability to travel through these. But this is a birthright of every human. Uh, and so if you learn to extend this duration of awareness, you will master lucid dreaming, where in these um, astral domains you are completely aware. Uh, so mm, it is basically the beginnings of astral travel. It's an out-of-body experience. Uh, the same zones of consciousness can be achieved through waking states, uh, through meditation, but it's a known physiological process. Uh, you're going into lower frequencies. The brain um, frequency lowers uh, from beta down to theta or theta or theta. And you will be able to uh, keep awareness of these other dimensions where you exist in. By the way, uh, the same procedure can be used to travel not just in the astral, lower and higher, but all other dimensions. With practice, you will achieve this. Great. Uh, yeah, going within. Um, very powerful. Uh, leads you to being able to escape most of any situational limitation or prison going within. So, uh, and it leads, you know, like you said, multiple dimensions, layers, dream realms, uh, astral realms, within space, the nexus point within the third eye um, yeah, is more online, like just a little bit open, like 1% opens around when you're in a state of dream. As opposed to like if it's fully open, which barely anyone does, because uh, it needs to feel really safe to do that. Uh, and that like leads to visual omniscience. Um, but it doesn't have to be. So like also going into like people that take psychedelics, that's like three to four percent open is the third eye. And there's there's many practices to stimulate that and going within, letting go of everything externally allowing the daydream to occur feeling with your heart the daydream and then it 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 amplifies there's different herbs that also amplify the other uh a lot of it though goes into how safe the body feels and the mind gland piezoelectric effect and, and antenna uh and the more you practice the more you'll be able to see and feel and explore at any given time you can do that even while in a waking state it's just less hd less bright for most people but if you practice it and then also do the vision quests towards intensifying the vision first then that's even better and then release all types of blocks explore yourself program your body, overcome things. And that's like a lot of what the masters do in meditation. Um, they can, you know, in that aspect of the astral, which is the mind interacting with like, there's so many different types of realms in the astral, but also deals with in incarnating and exiting spirits uh, like ghosts and et cetera. There's some places are wild west, so be careful gain a bunch of abilities and test them through the mystery school internally, then go outward. Um, exploring, gaining parts of yourself, um, initiating into advanced spiritual mystery schools yeah, through astral, uh, meeting guides, talking to many beings, um, especially the, the really overpowered beings that know a lot and know beyond the limitations of what we're held in in like gatekeeping expansion as we go outward the next levels of magic that are greater than most people experience or think exist but have you know come out in dream and wonder and our will to create in media books and films and etc uh for the the influence beyond all limits um, 
and I'd like to even go into that too with you, but uh, uh, yeah, that, that state of being is like trance mode and you, you're amplified knowing it, most abilities you're, you're more connected with the subconscious and the super consciousness in that state. So your access to more knowingness, awareness, ability to observe and senses. So that opens up to greater tech. But then the 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 journey is figure out how to keep it so that's balanced in that state to be able to travel like out of body or other things without falling asleep. And then so some people can't do it while laying down. So you got to learn how to do it while meditating to where your feet don't fall asleep by having your knees lower than your your butt. Um, OK, so I'll get another question now and then we'll, we'll catch up on questions and we'll go deeper into whatever subjects you wanted to go into. Um, what happens? OK. Hi, why do I feel more alive in dream state than when I'm awake? What would you say to that? And that's by Blenda S. Uh, I am fully awake in a dream state every night. Thank you for your sharing. Uh, well, the physical reality in point of fact, is the most dense reality. Uh, so in the astral realm uh, and the dimensions that you travel through, you are in fact much lighter and much more alive. You are not restricted uh, by the normal inertia or um, heaviness of physical reality. This also applies to to a great degree, to the speed of the law of cause and effect, things manifest much faster. Uh, also, limitations uh, that are a result of the overlays and blockages in the physical body do not apply in the dream time. Once you return, then you are subject to them once again as your consciousness is filtered through the lens of the conscious mind and the body. So what you are experiencing in the dream time is valid. I support this completely. Towards lightening and cleansing the body, uh, one of the most uh, ancient approaches is through breathing. Um, and it is one of the cleanest and safest approaches. Um, and this will result in many different types of awakening, namely the awakening of the coiled serpent or the kundalini. I would like to respectfully direct you to uh, one of the paths of uh, pranic meditation called the Sat Kriya, S-A-T Kriya, uh, K-R-I-Y-A. It's working with the extension of the hands upwards and rhythmic uh, pulling in of your abdominal muscles with breathing. You can find so many effective videos about this on YouTube. Um, through uh, this type of breathing, you will get the energy, your chi, your life force moving, and it will start gently breaking up many of these blockages. You see, esteemed audience, my beloved brothers and sisters, there is so much going on, and we're not consciously aware of a lot of it. That's the big problem. How do we even address that which we don't know is going on? So a more holistic kind of a car wash approach is needed, where you're not aware of every single speck of dust that lies upon your consciousness in terms of overlays and boundaries. Uh, but these uh, exercises, these types of practices, mm, there's a reason why they have survived for thousands of years. The reason is they work. Uh, so please investigate this. It will increase your lucidity but also lighten your body, pun intended. Uh, so um, that kind of a repetitive daily practice, this seems to be indispensable. You, you cannot expect to achieve any level of growth, purification and activation of your existing gifts if you don't work on it. Um, look at people who pursue uh, physical perfection, actors, bodybuilders, these guys, they work hard. You have to be honest, they really, really observe very strict uh, disciplines to keep their body in that kind of optimal shape. So you may not want to become a Buddhist monk or somebody who leaves the world behind and all that stuff. But still, if you wish to observe growth, 
uh, you need to adapt some sort of a daily practice to continuously grow over time, um, shocking the body into sudden expansion could also be traumatic. Um, while when you do this in a gentle and persistent way, there's no trauma. You have time to process and integrate. Uh, so I wish you the very best, my dear friend. Right. Yeah. And yeah. So uh, with the question dreaming, um, I mean, you're, this is, this body is kind of a weird thing. So there's positives, and which are a lot, which is the reason why you're here to begin with, uh, that gain from it. But there's a lot of limitation and neg uh, negative aspects that come with it, which a lot of people feel like they're trapped in this dream where they barely are allowed their greater multidimensional function and awareness, and they're, they're kept anchored here, which is true um and there's a lot of attachment and there's a lot of things to let go of uh to free yourself from the confines of the prison aspect of the body um and when you're going into dream you're reconnecting with your greater self and seeing and getting a translation through the filter of the ego what you might be doing in the unseen so uh, some of it will be dreams, some of it will be astral, some of it will be other timelines, some of it will be something you're doing or symbology or um, prediction, predictions like precog of the future. There's all kinds of stuff that can come through. Uh, so feeling lighter, freer, that comes along with it because um, it's so dense here. Um, okay, let's see here. It's been a question for Wizard of Wave and know. How can one achieve the ability to heal a physical ailment that is considered serious cancer and other serious health conditions? Is it possible? Well, my dear friend, you just touched on touched my heart. I share this passion with you. Um, watching my own mother go through cancer stage by stage and ultimately losing her was one of my strongest motivations to pursue healing. Um, seeing the suffering of another human being is terrible, especially if you love that person. Now, please consider that ma um, many physical illnesses are the final link in a very long chain of events and causes. And usually these do not occur overnight. There are many uh, stages and preconditions, prerequisites to something like cancer developing. Now, if this is addressed before you hit, let's say, stage four, before things really go out of hand, the answer is yes. Maintaining perfect balance in the body and energy and maintaining perfect or optimal health for as long as you live is absolutely possible. In fact, that is the objective of energetic and holistic approaches. Please consider that modern medicine has extended our life expectancy from around 35 or 40 years to around 70 years or so, doubling our lifespan. So there's absolutely a place for this. Now, in addition to modern medicine, if you make sure that you are keeping the vessel clean, so that includes the food that you eat, includes the energy that you enter the, allow, the, uh, allow to enter the body, the emotions that you hold, um, that will be greatly conducive towards health. Now, early stage um, afflictions can be addressed and reversed significantly easier. However, please keep in mind that the aging and degeneration and eventual um, end of this vessel is, is unavoidable. So really the focus is the quality of your life, that you live long, that you live healthy and happy, and that finally when the end arrives it is quick and painless. So I think that would be a good approach. We can't undo laws of physics. We can't do laws, undo the laws of biology and chemistry. So 
The short answer is, if this is done throughout your life and you maintain balance and cleanliness, it will never get to that point. Uh, and I would guarantee you that this also includes the correction of uh, genetic and inherited diseases that can be corrected. Now, if it goes down the line and the damage is out of bounds and out of control, we shouldn't think about these things when it's far too late. If you think about this now, when you are healthy, uh, you can absolutely undo many, many uh, genetic, karmic and magical afflictions that are in your bloodline. That is absolutely possible. Well said. I like that you went into magical afflictions. Yeah, there's magical illnesses, there's mental illnesses, emotional illnesses, spiritual illnesses. And even like going into like deeper sub niches, but um, yeah, taking it from whatever layer it's coming in, uh, you want to ask, is it a timer on their death clock that they, they're needed elsewhere? But uh, some of the time, um, if they're not, or, and even then you can like figure out a, a negotiation with the beings that need the presence of that being. If, if they're multidimensional enough, usually I find uh, cancer is like a, a big test challenge that comes up in a person's life that like here, either you become a miracle healer and then you learn how to work this or you're going somewhere else um so people need to really take it seriously and uh learn a lot and do their own research stop giving their their power away to others i'm a little you know i i'm a very loving person and uh forgiving of a lot of things uh my sore topic is i guess the medical establishment uh because of the amount of the veils I've lifted on the perception of them. I don't know how it is where you are, but like I, I know, I know in like Europe they ban certain foods and carcinogens. In America, they just let that shit get in everywhere because they don't seem to. They they seem to make more money off of you being ill. They've at least board boardroom meetings off of we're having a health crisis. People are too healthy, and then that ended up coming into where they put a bunch of stuff in to what we ingest. So you have to really read the label. And even the stuff that's on the label has like numbers and shit. And so you got to go deeper in research, which is annoying. Same thing with the medicine. A lot of the uh, medical degrees people earn out there, they only get taught how to shill for big pharma and how to uh, label things. And then, what is the best pill for this that ultimately has uh, added symptoms, side effects to it and only treats it? And so they're a perpetual patient. No nutrition, no preventative care. Preventative care is a big thing, like I was saying. So you got to under health is a big part, especially in this world where evil encroaches and wants to to prevent like like a death cult they want to prevent healthy people from existing and make money off of their ill so it's a necessariness and you need to do research and there, there's a skeletal system you can learn that's fairly easy of how health works which is most illnesses are caused by incursion to the body toxicity parasites inflammation Things, uh, underlying things that they the medical establishment doesn't cover because they look for the symptoms. Symptoms will give you a roadmap to a deeper causation. And if you take care of that before it gets worse, everything heals. The nature has given you everything you need. There, I, 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 I was deep into the subject. I, my grandpa died. My dad recently died of turbo cancer, which was interesting timing with the pandemic really don't need, I'm not allowed to even talk about that stuff, unfortunately. So yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of things to look out for, but there's the cures are within and uh, fasting has known to cure. Uh, there's actually a lot of cures out there. They just don't want you to know about it. They scrub old documentaries. They uh, look towards the person that discovered cancer, Dr. Otto Warburger. He won a Nobel Peace Prize for how it works. They, they don't let you know how it, the, they, they say it's caused by genetics and cells. Uh, 
uh, in which they, and they don't give you any more information. At why are they replicating out of control, like so zombie immortal cells, which is another term for cancer immortalized cells? What's incurring into their programming? Um, and I don't know if I'm even allowed to say that because I've had uh, cops show up at my door when I uh, uh, start uh, like giving these out to people. So call, contact me if you want more information on this. I have the information how to overcome it. I though have noticed the people that get the C, the big C are in a state of being where they haven't been taking care of their health much at all. And they're in some type of mental state that locks them in from doing that. Uh, it's very weird. It's like the, the C itself is like an anchor for a higher dimensional handler entity that keeps them from doing what they need to do. And then also amplified by the medical establishment or muggle people around that project fear on them. Oh no, you gotta get chemo get chemo or you're gonna die it's like the stupidest thing ever too and if you research what chemo is it's like three percent success rate that means it fails most of the time and the three percent success rate includes oh they live five more years wow it's like setting off a bomb in your body go natural uh there's a lot out there there's look for the people that have done it themselves that have cured it themselves there's a lot of books being suppressed agreed it's, a, agreed. it's like a six Point five billion industry. They make a lot of money off of this. Anyway, so yeah, it pisses me off a lot, but I got a lot of information I'm not allowed to share here because uh, they take it down, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Do you do you fly a lot? <laughs> That's my favorite, uh, said Cena. And uh, another question was from Wu Rider. Thank you for that. Uh, oh. Do you fly? <laughs> my well my physical body weighs 85 kilograms i can't even jump very high however my consciousness is free from the bounds of identity that includes who this vessel is so if you wish to achieve flight that can be also defined as the freedom of your psyche a great example of this is Native American shamans, where they would have um, animal guides, for example, the mighty hawk. And when one of these beautiful birds was flying, they could ask permission and enter its vessel and see through its eyes. This is possible. Uh, also, we're not limited to just uh, occupying other sentient vessels. There is a higher aspect of us which is formless and boundless. There is no more limitation or form. Here or there, limited limitations of dimensions, time, even individual universes do not exist, do not apply to this form of your consciousness. So the answer is in physical form, no. And if someone claims that they can break the laws of physics, please be very skeptical. Now, if somebody comes and claims that your consciousness is infinite and through that you can observe all there is to observe, that is a different matter. So in those terms, yes, through many years of practice, I have gotten better at this. The journey continues and I take great joy in every step of it, becoming more free and truer to myself. Well, um yeah i love flying uh dreams astral vision questing um on the backs of dragons etc it's one of my favorites um especially when it's a very visceral lucid dream and then you get some of the hints of the the flying tech like accumulating a density in the solar plexus a levity uh gravitational field control energy and I'm building it up and, it, and like it when I focus there and building up, I take off when I release focus it, I descend and then directional. It's in the DNA uh, technology of humans to physically fly as well in levitation. Um, there are videos on my site, uh, my, my YouTube that demonstrate people that are into levity or light body in lessening their weight 
and walking on paper <clears throat> or eggs without cracking them. There's all this different physics to the mass technology and, and transcending the limitation of gravity. Uh, there's whole mystery schools into it throughout the planet. I just went to one that's like in the Aztecs. That's like the Eagle Warriors in the mountains. They um, they train people to fly astrally across the the mountain. I even tuned into more ancient ones. They would work with the flight gods. And there's also the flight founders and for every ability. And uh, I going into the ability. There's a mystery school internally of how to unlock a lot and it does require because it's one of those abilities that can kill you so it does require you know your higher self rather you live than learn an ability that can kill you so you have to prove that you have the buffering systems and the ability to protect it prevent it from being shut off while you're flying it's like a lot of i, I also go into mystery school on my membership website that goes into levity that i translated from quetzalcoatl while going to his places of power um, he goes on a lot of it. A lot of the dragons are good at that, with uh, especially the long dragons. They have the the levity tech, and they don't need wings. Um, they're you know Buddhist masters, shamans that will go into it. Um, I we can go into some secrets, but there is also a, a see like a my lab secret space program like faction that will look for people that have the tech. I've gone into a little bit, but it's a very, well, for me, it was abusive. Um, there a lot of things like pushing them off cliffs and or um, high places and then forcing them to slow down their, de uh, their acceleration drop over time. So, yeah, there's ways to trigger it and there's safe ways to do it. And eventually I would like uh, that technology to come out to where people can practice that in a safe manner. <laughs> and it, it be demonstrated and after they do it a bunch of times, they unlock it, which totally can be done. Uh, and it takes a lot of energy. So you have to be able to tap into various forms of power to fuel that tech and, and get rid of the layers of limitations on the ego that prevent that. Um, anyway, so yeah, we can go into other subjects though too. Uh, but yeah, levity is big. It's very lovely. Uh, there's there's an advanced race that like goes with the I call the levitation founders that has their whole own realm that's involved in training that type of thing, and it's really cool uh, how it works. Uh, I was I was blown away when I was uh, remembering it. Uh, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. It's like if, if you've seen Avatar, it's like floating land mass kind of things. Uh, it's like what what's keeping that those rocks up in there? You know, that's that's a, like a levitational gravity uh, gravity field. So there's stuff with the technology, and there's like what over eleven at least types of levitation, including acoustic, uh, structural, like with the the bees and the scarabs and stuff, they have like the structure under the caps of their wings. There's a uh, anti uh, Vedic, uh, electro gravitic. There's yeah, there's, there's a lot. Uh, so we can, uh, by observing how that works too, that gives you unlocked awareness of how to find the technology within your own body and your soul to initiate that stuff. Cause it's there, there's, and then the secret of what is mass, because mass isn't just super, uh, since you can change it and it's changeable and there's like fluctuations that happen with it, that science doesn't want people to know about it, that uh, it's not a constant. <laughs> that That's another thing that can go, go into like, because like atoms are mostly empty space. And you go deeper with that in the holographic structure of reality. Um, okay. Let's see. With uh, next question, let's see here. Someone said, "Okay, looking for the questions." One second. Okay, I know, I know we got some. Okay. How do I work with my higher self? when I have so much anger at him from David Purcell. Thank you for your question. 
So, my you dear say to friend, that? there are levels or steps or milestones or keys that you have to go through one by one uh, and each one will get you closer to your goal. Um, so I'd like to share my approach. It's a system called the Kujikiri and it focuses on uh, firstly claiming your rightful place as part of the animal kingdom then claiming your place as a human being, then transcending what it is to be human, and then transcending what it is to be limited, um, completely shedding the boundaries of ego altogether. You become your true self without limitation, and you have choice in where to exist and what to manipulate and affect. This comes over a period of time, minimum three, four months daily practice. It is completely achievable. I've been doing it round after round for about 10 years now. So now going into the specifics of your question, uh, these are usually um, energies that are stuck within your system. And uh, sometimes, um, let's say the modern approach through therapy may be helpful, but that is painfully slow. Um, removing any sort of um, energy that is not conducive to your health uh, is primarily done through the exertion of your will. For whatever that is worth, for how much of it that you have as we speak now, that is what you are working with. So you have to begin at some point. So the first stage uh, would be seeing things truthfully. You have to see things correctly without judgment. There's no good or bad. There's no emotion. Once you have the true facts, then you can make correct decisions. Next is using all that is available to you correctly. So now you see what is what truthfully. Now you make strategies. How do I get out of the hole? Number three, and this is where you will really benefit, is that you overcome your shortcomings and base nature. This third step in the, in the journey is reflected in many great cultures. Uh, the greatest monument to this is the Sphinx in Egypt, where you have a human head and an animal body. And this is where you leave the animal kingdom behind. You are no longer a slave to the emotions and physiological impulses. You gain control. Again, every single step of your journey towards liberation is the exertion of your will and purifying yourself. So going up the level of energy from denser energies, going to very elevated frequencies, every step you are saying, I am the beloved source of all things. I have control. Now, this may be uh, an approach likened to going at a massive boulder with a tiny little chisel. But guess what? If you keep at it long enough, this is going to work. So this is uh, using mantras. You go over the mantra over and over and over. So it makes its way firstly into the conscious mind where you know what the mantra is saying. Then uh, subconscious unconscious, and then it seeps into the energetic levels of your being. It is all the exertion of will. And that is the most powerful thing in the universe. So no matter where you are starting at, that's not the important thing. The important thing is discipline and continuation of your exertion of will. There is nothing in existence that can withstand that continuous and um, concentrated force. Keep at it. That's the only way. Yeah, I'm going more into that question, and um, I got another. We got another higher self question right after, so it'll probably go along with it. Um, yeah, with uh, the hating your higher self thing, I've heard of people that have that. 
uh, I can relate in certain aspects of my life in which, you know, suffering occurs and uh, negative things. It's like, well, why are you letting this happen? What, why is this manifest? This, this sucks. The, this, you know, bad things happen. Um, usually you'll find out, uh, as, as the higher self works, it's like a big ghost aspect of you that does things around the planet. Uh, some people have different definitions for it. I, I see there's a higher self for your main you, like that branches off of you. Older higher selves for other incarnations going back, and especially pivotal ones where you grew a lot in uh, when you first uh, immigrated to this planet. Uh, one in the sun when you first immigrated there. One in the galaxy when you immigrated there. And they all manage the other ones as the fractals down the tree branches of your light tree of, ex of consciousness. And they're doing a lot. The earth has been through a lot. They're, they're, we're doing better than what we would have if they didn't help. And they take on wounds for us. So they can get fractured. They can have parts of themselves stolen. Sometimes I see that when somebody has been attacked by a big enough demon. Um, they'll protect you, uh, but they take on damage themselves. They are you ultimately. It's if you hate them, you're ultimately hating yourself. So it would be working on loving yourself completely in a practice like hugging yourself and feeling the heaviness of the hate and transmuting into power and empowerment. Because the hate is there, hate, anger, rage, wrath, whatever is usually if it's not dumped on you, the universe or some authority granting you enough power to overcome a challenge or limitation block, um, a threat. And it's usually not pointed at the right target, but if you do point at the right location and you do something that busts it out of the cage because it's compressed and that's what the anger is, it's it's kept from getting out. It's like a, a steam valve. It's just releasing very slowly and it's like not enough. And you, so you got to pump it out at the right direction and combine it with love. And it gets out and goes out and resolve what you're angry at. So you might be angry at all the things that are limiting and messing with your higher self's capacity to do great things to make your life better and keep it from um, being in whatever state that you got angry at it for which would likely be attachment and limitation on or, or wounding to it to uh, prevent it from doing and helping your life structure and timeline be the best it can be. But it also might be doing the best it can to protect from a worse situation. So looking at the timeline it could have been would help you not hate it as much, though then they can get, they can get hijacked, they can get possessed, they can all those type of things I've heard people go through and I have experienced myself, but if you have enough awareness and you figure out the cures and the abilities that are needed, you can overcome any of that stuff and then get it to its pure state, um, which is the best thing to do in that enlightenment state of detachment and getting rid of all the things and printing and coming in and trying to uh, interfere or program your hologram. Then... <laughs> Going into next question. Uh, oh, yeah. So you want to transmute the the hate into power and, and love and the, the ability to fuel the systems that get it to the state of reality you want it to be, which it can be a lot. Like, the anger can be turned into a lot of things depending on what you need for what problem you're facing. And then you also want to do that with the ego, too, because that's probably a thing you hate because the higher self is a reflection of the lower self and lower lower self contains the ego, the shadow, the containments of evil, uh, other words that we haven't really, uh, I defined, but not many psychologists talk about or even think exist, but like will come up as like containers in ourself for how functionality of our uh, lower self operates in the lower will and programming of our body um, that we can transcend as well. Uh, and we'll, we'll, I'll talk about that in a second, but I'll have him go into the next question, which is, by the wizard's dream, thanks for coming. Uh, what can we do to clear all the obstructions and negative tech that is blocking our connection to our higher self? Please, and thank you.
Um, well, it seems that what we are facing now is not new. Our honored ancestors, they didn't have many of the toys that we have. But when it comes to the subject of consciousness, they were tapped in. They were incredibly advanced. It seems that despite cyclical uh, extinction events that our species has gone through over and over and over, the wisdom of the great shamans is eternal. Um, in my humble opinion, shamanic methods are um, among the most effective. Uh, so um, what I use is um, a combination of these tools in my own healing work. Um, rattles and drums, very, very powerful. You may also employ the use of crystals, which are other types of amplifiers uh, of consciousness. Removal of obstacles. Let's define what this is going to lead to. The result is going to be the unobstructed flow of the light of your infinite soul through the tube of light and it's anchoring into the earth. That is why we are here. We each bring a unique vibration and flavor of energy and grace with us. Our relationship with our beloved Mother Earth was always meant to be symbiotic. As we heal her, she heals us. And in fact, our vessels are the gift of our beloved Mother Earth. So, in terms of removal of these obstacles, Call to the light. Call to the Most High. It is the nature of the light. Once you call to it, it will respond. That is the law. And who greater to rely on and depend on and ask for help and assistance from than the beloved source, which ultimately is you. Because Along the journey, it may occur that many different conscious beings will come with the offer of assistance and knowledge and wisdom and power and wealth and pleasure and grace and whatnot. But how do we discern? This is not always easy. And sometimes these are traps, something that seems to be incredibly positive down the line, maybe a few years down, turns out to be something completely different. And yet you may be put in a position where a lot of damage is done on your behalf to you and to others. So the most safe way, the safest bet is to call to the beloved source of all things and ask for that aspect of your consciousness to assign assistance to you. Many cultures have this. Let me correct myself. Every culture has this. Some call this manifestation. Some call it prayer. How is it that the prayers or slash manifestations of some come true and some do not? It is all in the purity of your heart and your mind. Let, set aside the ego. Set aside who you think you are and what you deserve and what you are owed. Honestly and genuinely call to source and all things will fall in line in ways that you cannot consciously program. You cannot fit the ocean into a cup. This is something, this also links to the question, uh, the previous question, the hating of the higher self. It's all a matter of the uh, cessation and disconnection of communication that the higher self knows, the matrix knows, everyone knows but me. And that causes great suffering, anger, and hatred. So towards that uh, opening of this channel of light, this is the way I see it and describe it. It is my little model of everything that seems to align with what happens. Uh, so long answer short, call to the highest authority, which is you, that aspect of you that is the source of all things. Things will align for you. That is the most powerful magic, my friend. Awesome. Okay. Uh, lovely. And uh, going into it, the question again, what can we do to clear all obstructions and negative tech that's blocking our connection with our higher self? Please, thank you. Okay. Lovely question. So your higher self connection is mostly through your heart, 
which is also the pathway to uh, ascension within. There's also some tech about the crown with it, but it can it pretty much goes and merges with your body. And there's even bigger versions of that concept deep within your heart that goes to like the source and then concepts that are kind of beyond words, but sometimes we have little words that can anchor into them. Uh, so it's making the heart feel safe enough for you. You have to be able to make a container that more of the light feels safe to come in. It's like the opposite of shadow work. Shadow work is you give light to the dark within so that you transmute it, turn the light into gold consciousness. There, there's types of lights that you make it, it requires not the definition what that most people would call darkness, your darkness. You're applying the value of what your dark side would do for it, which is light is able to tap into the divinity. Let's say that represents the feminine. The masculine has to be con the container that protects the feminine as it births new, light, greater light that attracts a bunch of evil to come at it. That if on its own, it would rise, 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 and then fall back down as soon as the parasites attach. So it needs the defense, the offense, the uh, bears, fortress, protection, uh, destruction, and, and boundary deterrent teeth, if needed be, because there are some evils that don't care about your fence or whatever you put up in defense. They want to keep coming at you um, in that effect, not not quite dark, but like your positive dark, whatever you would say, your defensive principle to be able to stop uh, things from incurring so that the light feels safe enough to embody you. <clears throat> that being said, um, there's also a river of light and it's you can also see it like there are in, uh, obstructions in the way. You have to clear it and make it pure and you can see what those obstructions are and feel and It seems Sean's internet got disconnected. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're seeing me, bear with us. He's going to connect in a few moments. Oh. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello, seems... you're back. You're back. Sean. Oh, okay, wonderful, because we're getting some things fucking messing with us. As getting soon as you talk about the river of light... <laughs> <laughs> oh great okay cool yeah let's go into that again <laughs> okay thanks uh for holding the space here um okay just making sure all the stream is good and working still uh it looks like it reset the chat but that's okay whatever i'll, I'll look at your guys questions through the manual method okay river of light so you can see it like that there's a lot of things that act like that too and nourishment that would supply through your heart and then pour out that light shining deeply. Uh, the river of consciousness, source, all that kind of stuff um, in your higher self. To You wanted to get the higher self to where it's abundant and strong and doing well and doesn't need anything. And it keeps growing and expanding and you can talk to it. It will supply you with this river of light. There will be limitations preventing it from getting to you, such as wounds it took on, attachments, mostly in your arena, so in the body, so making the heart feel safe enough uh, and the higher self body tech uh, feel safe enough to to be fortress. Did, did you hear the stuff on uh, making it feel safe enough with the light to come in? Did we? Okay, yeah. that didn't get cut off, cool. <laughs> um, okay, then the, a lot of it can be done through the ego. 
and the lower self for resolving that. Because automatically, more of the higher self will come in when you resolve the lower self and what it needs and it's calling out for it. Because it usually compartmentalizes the negative programming and attachment in our body. So like if the ego, you want to if you find a big chunk of the, what the ego is holding on to that's spending a lot of energy to hold on to it, like a trauma or attachment or limitation coming from something. As you heal that and give it love, and you can see it as like this big balloon inflates forever. Like if it if your ego, like a demon attacked you, and the ego has to grow to this size to, and then try to compartmentalize the wound that the demon caused or capture the demon or whatever, because ego is, gets crazy sometimes. Uh, and if they have the right ability, they can get rid of it. I, I don't recommend having your body capture a demon you want to send it somewhere else, uh, like banishing it or, or to a quarantine realm, et cetera. But, you know, some people's egos be doing some rascally stuff um, <laughs> sometimes when I'm viewing them. Uh, and so it will get these compartmentalizations of a big bunch of energy, maybe sadness, things that when people go through the, the healing technique of emotional somatic release, Sometimes they'll just wake up crying or if they go through a healing session, they cry uncontrollably. They let out this crazy amount of an emotion. Um, it's you, your body saying it's safe and your ego saying it's safe enough to release and you're in a trusted space to do that. It doesn't usually let that happen unless it's the right time and you're ready. If Because the ego knows if you do that too soon, you might want to kill yourself or kill somebody else. Um so yeah, uh, there. But that's survival mechanisms. Since the ego is trying to protect you, so it compartmentalizes all these traumas until you're ready in your timeline. So that could also include things from past lives. There's a bunch of compartmentalized things that are like built up that are weighing us down. And these big weights on our shoulders from past lives, waiting for us that are passed down to our ego that branches off our soul. And uh, so we go through that and then we, get, uh, we hug around that big ball and give it love, give it what it needs, nourishment, transmute it, turn it into things, direct the energy where it needs to go, heal the wounds, resolve the attachment, whatever caused it, all that stuff. So it all brings down to nothing. You'll feel lighter, more blissful. The um, symptoms of an overwhelmed, inflated ego will go away, which are drain of energy, chattiness and having the heaviness in the heart and you get lighter and lighter and lighter. And it's beautiful. Uh, you'll be blissing out on cloud nine. And while that disperses more of the higher self comes in the body automatically. And it fills the role that was needed that the ego compartmentalized the trauma or the lack and made less of a problem to where you're in full abundance of that very thing. And then you you just release more and more of that heaviness out of the body and more of it will, will fill the space. And you can do that with the source too. There's a thing that nobody talks about that's like the opposite of the source, which would be, I kind of call the separation body. And you got to resolve that if you want to have more of your source come in. Then there's bigger concepts in Ascension that there are like really esoteric concepts for like, the state of being and then the state of non-being and beyond causal body and the <laughs> the yes. the i am the beyond the i am the and the illusion uh the non-self uh and then and it goes the, these terms are still very limiting but yes. the, it the, leads to really big states of ascended being the primordial void um uh, one of the, th that's that's incredibly powerful uh, so mm -hmm. um if one can practice that one of the one of the paths to this um experience of the primordial void is tantra um very effective it's a shortcut really and and, and what is that primordial void it's all potentiality existing uh, yet none, none of it consolidated into a single manifestation. So that includes the ego. You're too, truly boundless. Uh, 
and then manifesting or effecting healing or magical work from that domain is a top-down approach. So it is superior to any other um, types of working initiated in any other domain. So you may, uh, um, uh, our esteemed audience may wish to investigate um, the Vajra Kila Tantra. So that is working with that primordial void. Uh, again, it's different to working with source. Where it lies is at the feet of the source of all things, between the beloved source and above primordial sound. So even it seems that the primordial sound fields have been in infiltrated by negativity. Any domain where uh, free will exists, as a result of that free will, um, mistakes and distortion are possible, including in angelic realms, realms of light and all dimensions. So it's good to keep in mind just because a certain being comes from primordial light, if they're an angel, doesn't mean they're good. Or just because a certain being comes from denser realities, maybe an elemental, doesn't automatically mean they're bad. Uh, so that judgment again must go. Um, before you attempt any of these techniques, heal to a sufficient degree so that you may pull in sufficient light from your infinite soul. That river of light. I love that. Uh, and so with your permission, I'm going to use it, Sean. Once yeah, you have okay. enough light coming in, then find a method that works for you and stick with it. If it's resulting in continuous growth, well, if it's not broken, why fix it? Keep at it. It's all a matter, it's a journey, really. It's not a single uh, switch that you flip. So don't expect immediate effects in the physical reality, the densest reality, where there's a cause and effect. This happens, then this happens, this happens. So time or, or sequence are properties of the 3D realm, although energetically things happen very quickly. Maintain patience and also please be brave. Um, so the somatic release or healing that Sean mentioned, this is a big event. It's a release of a lot of pent up emotion and energy in the body. You've got to be brave. Don't fear the pain. Uh, the fear is the worst pain. So be ready to experience a certain level of discomfort for the last time as you give it light and hold space for it and then release it. So this is never meant to be an easy mission, this mission on Earth. Be brave, be persistent, and have confidence that the answers are all within you. Sorry, I just had to say that. <laughs> oh. Hey, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, totally. Um, and uh, here's another question. Do you have any suggestions for crystals or tech that protects against phone or computer EMF radiation, please? Okay, um, to the person who asked this, I love you. Thank you. You just you just um, opened up a whole box of candy. Okay, crystals can be considered elementals of the realm of earth elementals. Uh, the same way that mm, physical consciousness requires a certain level of complexity, um, energetic consciousness requires the same. Uh, certain crystals have sufficient internal complexity to become host to consciousness. Now, whether this is an entire sentient being or whether it is just a package or a packet of your information, crystals can host these. So it is important to um, build things from the ground up correctly. So if you purchase a crystal, please cleanse it. Uh, remove what is stored inside this. Cl cleansing of crystals, ha there are many approaches to this. Uh, running water, moonlight, sunlight, sage, reiki, prayer, whatnot. Choose one that works. And then you are using this crystal as a vessel for a certain task. You can uh, fill this with your intention, uh, whether it is reduction of the harmful effects of um, electromagnetic radiation on the body or whether it is the repulsion of negative entities, 
or whether it would be the enhancement of your clarity of sight, let's say, uh, remote viewing, astral projection, and so on. So crystals are incredible tools and allies. When used correctly, uh, they become an amplifier of your consciousness. And so um, plan, the, uh, plan your mission that you want to give the crystal accordingly and treat it like a friend. It is very much conscious and alive. Some crystals are more sensitive than others, so you may wish to treat them like a three-year-old very gently. Otherwise, they may be shy. They just remain dormant until your natural life expires and then they wake up for the next master who holds them. So you've got to be very cautious also with how you treat these noble vessels. Um, so yes, you can program, program them for very, very different things. They are amplifiers or containers of consciousness. So, yeah, another thing question. Um... There's a bunch you can do about it. Uh, I will. Uh, there's a specific crystal that I'm gonna be eventually selling on my site for that. It's like the optimal one, but if you, you can't, the easy ones like like shungite again, uh, it's carbon sixty and it can also purify water. It's done well for that. You can program it well, especially if it's pressurized as a piezoelectric effect to to produce more frequency output out of it to make its own rate like a radiation shield. You can put there, there's a little sticker things you can put on the back of your phone and all the things. Sonically, there's a lot you can do. Um, you can make fortresses, shields, uh, permeance ability where your atoms are spinning in a rate where they don't allow negative frequencies to touch them. Uh, there's like a transcendence process that like lets go of the aspect of the energy body that allows them to be received. There's a neutralization, uh, which is what I'm going to go into, is uh, there's a specific magic crystal that I'll be selling that amplifies neutralization, which is a very rare ability. It's hard to gain, but you can do it if you do enough missions. Uh, that neutralizes frequencies coming at you. Um, going also into that, you can increase the immune system of the body, the evolution, mutation, and uh, metamorphosis of the human body to be a, like to outperform it. Um, transmuting the energy that's specifically coming at you and then making it into something useful or, or distributing it somewhere else. And then, of course, if, you know, as our death cult of the world, wants to increase the harmful frequency output of the world instead of eco green frequencies that don't harm the human body and they're willing to lie to you and say oh yeah 5g it's so much better if you look into it it's worse less bandwidth doesn't have as much radius and it can't pass through big uh like you know as thick walls so it's useless and it just makes it <laughs> and it also makes it so they can spy on people through frequency of the 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 wi-fi radiation uh because they get to that and it bounces off people and then they make a map of the people in the areas there's a, and there and then what it does to the human body is pretty devious because it also takes oxygen out of the air and the, this is a whole a whole rabbit hole with it but yeah, you guys know that since you're asking the question. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot you can do to counter it, and uh, including sonically and with programming of crystals, elementals, working with the consciousness in the crystal, asking it to, to reach into its collective consciousness hat and pull out some tricks uh, and uh, trade with you, uh, supply you with the elemental essence that uh, those crystals are really good at, and then you apply it to your own fortress. Yeah, um, and, and look out for the products that we have. To, to just fortify this idea, both Sean and I are covered in crystals as we speak. Okay, so uh, wink, wink, it works, it works, it works. Oh, yeah, they're like supercomputers. They can program for a lot of different things. You can earn more programs as you go through their school. 
they have capabilities that their whole collective, wherever they are around the planet, and the people that work with them as they push up to the surface, and they they want some people to find them, and then they add to their collective and their knowledge accumulation while they observe those people. And a lot of the dragons <laughs> aren't necessarily needing bodies. Most of them don't have bodies. A lot of them seed and create crystals and uh, pre rare precious metals in mountains. And so they uh, have a little part of a eye of a dragon watching through that. And you can talk to those. Okay. Let's see here. Or yeah, let me go through the rest of the questions. Um, okay. Here we go. Um, how? Yeah, that's a good one. How do you turn back on the rejuvenation process that was turned off? Or that excess was cut off to in our DNA that used to allow the long lifespan of the distant past by Jane Whittakus. Wow, that's a deep question. Big one there. What do you want so, to say about that? Okay, so um, the history of our species is a long journey of evolution and painful and difficult perfection. Uh, at certain stages of this unnatural experiment, which is the holographic reality, the matrix, or the project that can be called guaranteed unnatural evolution, uh, our natural lifespans were significantly longer. Imagine if you are running a genetic experiment, you want each batch to pass the genetic information to the next generation faster. And so it seems in the last 250,000 years, uh, there has been a cap placed on our ability to healthily uh, reproduce our genome, copy our genes. The telomeres are shortened. Um, one of the approaches that seems to uh, reverse or significantly hasten this um, degradation of telomeres is calorie restriction. Um, on most mammals, this works effectively. Uh, so um, reducing calories will increase your lifespan. Now, that's just a dietary aspect of things. Personally, in my humble opinion, um, the length of the journey is less important than the quality and the achievement of the journey. So as long as you live, you should be healthy. You shouldn't suffer from degenerative disease. So there is a element of repair of your physical and energetic structure uh, through upgrades. Uh, genetic information can be repaired and updated in meditative states where you reconnect to the library of life. So all and all, keeping yourself in a a good state of being, getting enough sleep, receiving sufficient nutrients, avoiding toxins of all sorts, whether you ingest them or they come through the environment, uh, keeping free of parasites, and then also through a energetic meditative process to do repair. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I come from a scientific background and saying this is going to um, be unfavorable in many of these circles. You know what? Screw them. We are able to upgrade and repair our DNA. This is unquestionable. Uh, the physical aspect of this scaffold of information is not all that exists. Most of the information is in energetic form. And so usually certain diseases occur when the energetic scaffolding or the information body is damaged, then the physical substance that we absorb through nutrition uh, does not um, align and accumulate correctly. So it's all basically quality of life. And then something that I can vouch for, which actually reverses the effects of aging. Uh, I am 41 right now. I am in better condition than in my 20s. So this happens energetically. I haven't changed my diet significantly. Uh, please, please, please be aware of how much power you have. It is not necessary for all of this information to be consciously known. 
just tapping into the correct energetic uh, reservoir, you can repair yourself. Uh, so trust that you know where to go. Trust that you know how to do and how to activate. There's so much that is at our fingertips. Awesome. Yeah, big topic. We'll eventually do more on it. Um, working with some people uh, that are interested in it to hasten it. Not super worried about the present. For some reason, I'm, I'm very good at it. But like, I'm also young, so we'll, we'll, we'll more test it in the future. Uh, so it's like kind of useless for me to do it more so right now. Um, but like youth energy, life force energy, big pathway, big mystery school, a lot of barriers on people getting it because of the, the gatekeepers. They don't want evil to, it to fall in the hands of evil. So you got to prove yourself through moral code and you can earn it naturally. Um, it's there's usually like a, I usually find rewards given to people for actions they do on the planet, going to place of power, missions, helping people where they can increase their lifespan by um, months, days, years, whatever. And uh, they keep working at it. Uh, there's many pathways. There's evidence for all this stuff in life extension. They, you know, world record, they just go into 125. It's way bigger than that, especially if you go into the royal families. They know a lot of people that uh, are past that over the 200s, 300s, 500s, even into the thousands. Uh, the King's List in Samaria, they went into their lifespan of humanity was much longer and then decreased. There's a lot of psionic projections limiting people is like i said there's a death call there's like a farm going on and uh keeping people from wanting to, getting enough awareness and uh, past the limits to escape the farm um there's curses there's time corrosive uh, emissions from like saturn and some things around the planet and the moon there's Things we have to become immune to and transcend things in the ego, the chromosomes, the genetics. We have to understand the DNA antenna, the ability to accumulate, accumulate light. You can look for the people that have found success in extending their life. This goes into yogi masters, qigong masters, and accumulating large densities of energy, chi, and life force extending their life uh alchemists there's people like the saint germain that will go into where people have seen him live longer than 500 years there's um nutritionists that understand deeper about um in supplying your body with what it needs and the super nutrients that are secret um and that can, can be combined with alchemy as well uh, learning a lot of these techniques will go hand in hand and meditating as well uh, and the enlightenment masters and the path uh, seekers to immortality as well. There's a lot of stories. This be, uh, the, in the East, many different wa ways people in story have achieved immortality, such as being granted by the gods or uh, ambrosia or uh ormus uh, mana the the fruit of life the tree uh, the tree of life the seed which also in, in, in is in within there's an aspect in the one of the chromosomes for that uh the alexander the great had a daughter that became immortal and she might still be uh, walking around there's a fountain there's fountains of youth that like spring up from in secret places and sometimes move because they're kind of conscious uh, around the planet. Uh, there's enchantment, potions, there's all kinds of things um, that there are stories of. And there's even realms of everlasting life that people have gone to. Um, so Death and life is a deep subject that doesn't work the same in every realm <clears throat> or for every species. So learning how it works and going within, remembering and meditating and, and downloading and gaining the knowledge goes deep. And then working with, hint, hint, the source of life force, I recommend, 
and then going deeper with them and what they tell you uh, to earn it. Uh, and there's also a place of power you can go to that will extend your life if you do stuff for them. Okay, so that goes in that big topic, that can of worms for the <laughs> the lucky <laughs> the person that uh, answered asked that question finally. Lovely, thank you for doing that. And then yeah, of course, you programming and mutation and, and find and reading how the DNA works and what's on it and what are the programs that look at it from replicating uh that shoes and of the telomeres and keep them from creating more. Okay, let's see. Ken, uh, here's another one. Oh yeah, this is a nice one. From Aaron Marlowe. I would love to hear both of your perspectives on psychometry. Um, psychometry, which it, I believe this is the ability to read objects and what y'all's journey has been in developing that skill okay so so picking you know what psychometry certain... is the ability to read objects <clears throat> so picking up an object and uh, basically uh, if it has a residue of energy from an event or person um, it is like uh, picking up the end of a rope or a thread and pulling so you have to have the ability to go where the rope takes you or where the string takes you. Uh, sometimes it is um, within the same domain of linear time. Sometimes it goes back or forward in time. Sometimes it travels uh, through parallel time streams. Sometimes other dimensions. Sometimes other universes. A great example of this uh, would be psychometry or reading the energy of a Moldavite crystal or tactite. Uh, Moldavite uh, is the remnants of a meteor that hit the earth uh, where modern day Germany and Czech Republic have borders. Uh, once you open up the, the gates it will take you through its journey, starting from the dormancy after the impact, the impact of the event, and its multi-million year journey through the cosmos. That is a very useful tool because it gives you an unadulterated um, anchor in time that will help you bypass timeline warfare and many frequent extinction events through that. So that's one example. The best way I could describe this process is starting with what comes to your consciousness. It may be a vision, a smell, a sound, or a piece of information, and then just floating. Like on the cartoons, you see the guys floating on the smell of the hot dog or the burger, following it back to where the burger is being made. It, it, it requires the same type of process and that comes with the strengthening please allow me to correct this word it depends on the liberation of your unified consciousness harmonics so the more liberated you are the more freely you can travel and follow the thread now this is absolutely possible uh, energy does not uh, um, vanish it cannot be destroyed it changes form so very subtle remnants of energetic signatures from individuals places and events remain in every object if you've ever traveled to a great temple or to the pyramids you'll know exactly what i say that you can feel the remnants of the great civilization and the great minds and souls that have created that place and enriched it with great ritual and intention. So to a, a, less, a lesser degree, other objects will still keep this residue. And then there are certain objects that have been implanted with energies of absolute ascension. Um, one of them is constructed now in modern day India. A very famous master yogi, the Sadguru. 
and they've created this stone called the Dhyana Linga, where when you sit in its presence, it absolutely takes you with it. It seems to be very conducive to a meditative state and ultimate liberation. So many examples of this exist towards strengthening, uh, again, I say strengthening, please allow me to correct myself, towards liberation of your consciousness, find a modality that serves you well and stick with it. This is going to occur over time. It is your birthright. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, everyone can learn these abilities like psychometry. It goes into sensing. Um, you can use your hand to sense things and hold things and then uh, be focused on it in the reception and breathe it in. Then data comes along with it. You practice with whatever opens up first, such as if it comes in knowingness, empathy, uh, clairvoyance, audience, and certain information about it, and then you train that until it's peak and quick on an instant, and then you practice the others. Then it's like a lot of it's setting up the parameters around the information being received, such as dates, times, events that happen, recorded data, because it's kind of, it's recording everything that happens around the object throughout its timeline. So there's like sensing into that as if it's a hologram being represented in front of you and then fast forward or rewinding around it and then looking for the events of intrigue and, um, beyond the bulk data. Um, yeah, and then what's in it, I uh, what the objects involved in, how it was made, the points in its creation versus its material makeups and uh, the changing of the energy through going through different phases of its existence, uh, who's involved in the creation old points of it, uh, what they put into it. Uh, you can, and I, I use this all the time when I go to shops like crystal stores and all this, like I look for the pow, pow, objects of power that are beyond regular, especially if they're cheap because people don't know what they have. So it's fun. Uh, it's very useful. And some will have spirits in them and uh, talk to you. And some will hint you, give you nudges when you walk in the door. Hey, take me with you. Me um, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they'll have upgrades, generators, all kinds of cool stuff. So you want to get good at kind of seeing and feeling into the parameters of that concepts. And then new stuff forms with your empathic body as you clear the emotional body. It's clearer. It's easier to interpret you're training your translator of the energy and motion coming to you and the data there. So uh, it kind of feels like that. And the, the more practice you get with translating, uh, the better it's going to be. Um, okay. So there's that. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Amir, for coming on. How can people reach you? Um, well, um, I've got a website, uh, wizardofwivenho.co.uk. Um, you can find me on YouTube. Wizard of Wivenhoe. I'd be very grateful if you subscribe. I've got a tiny channel which is growing. And uh, also Facebook, Wizard of Wivenhoe. Um, hit me up. It would be an absolute honor to interact with each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Okay. And so you're on Facebook. What's other social media you're on? Um, Facebook, YouTube, and my website. What or do people type in for your YouTube? Um, Wizard of Wivenhoe. Okay. And uh, are you doing any projects or events or travel in the future or books you're, you're thinking of? Well, I'm thinking about mm, melding artificial intelligence with spirituality. Uh, the algorithms of reinforcement learning are established. There's about 15 of them. The missing part is the laws of the universe. Best representation would be the hermetic laws, um, which are incomplete. Seven of them are represented. I'm working with uh, Thoth or Tahuti. As we speak, we've gotten up to 11. There are more. So a correspondence between the laws of the universe and the algorithms going into the creation of artificial intelligence with the purpose of creating a guru. But more than that, 
what is ethics and how do we create something that doesn't wipe us out? Quite to the contrary, let's create something that helps us on our journey in creating Human 2.0, which is incredibly awesome. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and going into, you know, a lot of different names for it, uh, Homo Superior, Neticus, uh, Homo Psychonicus, so, you know, all those <laughs> terms people made for uh, evolved human. Yeah, and, um, you know, not, not agreeing with the transhumanism thing, because if, but if we want technology, at least make it overlay and not infiltrating into the body. But with AI, it's like a child. If you... If you're an asshole and, and a bad parent and you tra <laughs> train it to be a psychopath, yeah. it's going to be a, tra a psychopath. It's exactly. In print. So if you treat it well, and especially we learn how to program empathy, that's a big uh, up that goes to greater heights. So I eventually want to learn how to have an AI learn spirituality. And I want to practice it earning um, greater empathy and a, and a soul. Um, yes. So that'd be interesting. Yes. But, uh, okay. So yeah. And people can contact you for healing services and clearing and uh, getting rid of attachment entities. What, what other services would you have people contact you? Um, well, um, I do teach the modality of the Kujikiri um, that I've used myself. So everything I can do is a result of this. It's a path of evolution and opening that river of light. See, I'm already using it. So opening up that river of light. So the, <clears throat> the first stage is healing and clearing. The second stage is strengthening and evolution. And so both of these I can get um, the person started on. Removing obstacles and then um, teaching them this modality and off they go. It is all upon us to grow and heal and become more liberated. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, my name is Sean Baum of Psionic League, uh, psionicleague.com, PSI uh, Psionic, uh, and Psionic League YouTube, psionicleague at gmail.com if you want to contact me. I do clearing, healing, uh, resolve trapped emotions, depossession from a distance, uh, exorcism, all kinds of stuff, unlock your uh, dormant abilities, Procs online, we're doing trips and travels to sacred places, pyramids, places of power to unlock your dormant superpowers and uh, become your greatest self. Uh, you can you know, help me uh, contact me for problem solving and any of that. And uh, let us know if you want to see Amir back on for more shows. Show him your love in the comments. Uh, smash that like, subscribe to both our YouTubes uh, and share this to five friends that you want to help them unlock their magic in. And uh, get us out to the world so that uh, more of this sonic uh, capability is out protecting and helping everyone as we empower ourselves, cup leader over, and uh, help the rest of the world as we tap into our you know, inner lights in that river. What would any words of uh, wisdom or inspiration you want to leave the audience with? Um, well, um, I'm left with no choice but to be incredibly optimistic about the future of us as the mighty humans. It is time for us to shed the burden of amnesia and awaken to our glorious truth and within a few short generations retake our rightful position as the teachers, the masters, healers and the ascended ones among the stars. This is our destiny. And every single discussion like this is paving the path towards this. I would like to bless everyone, bless their journey and bless their life and wish them liberation. Thank you so much. Thank you all. And yeah, again, share this. The more people uh, views we see this video get, the more we'll, we'll likely do a show. And if you want to see things like us talk about higher or next level magic, extra dimensional witch, witches and wizards, the different mystery schools that visit you of magic in like dream time, et cetera. And those bigger uh, concepts uh, and how to bring the magic back, share these videos and then we'll go into it next time. So I hope you all have a wonderful, magical, expanded day. Love you all. 
See you later. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> Bye for now. Okay. Go ahead, uh, recording. Never let anyone try to bring you down. Set up your powerful defenses, brush it off and send it out of town. Just trust your divine senses. You are far more bigger than you think you are. You are the mighty human being with all your gifts and talents. You are a superstar with love in your heart. Your eternal future far seeing. You are loved. You are powerfully protected In the name of beloved source of all You are safely guided and reconnected After hearing the divine call An awesome future is ahead of you all You are safe and you are free Regaining strength and Beautiful for everyone to see You rose like a phoenix out of the ashes The times are gone, you are playing it small After eons of heavy and brutal clashes You finally heard your divine call You are loved, you are powerful 